Welcome to Horror Study Hall, the academic side of horror. I'm your host, M.A. Reynolds. It's time to get spooky. Welcome back to Horror Study Hall. It's nice to have you back again with me. Today, I will be talking about how to get into horror if you're if you're scared of everything. Um, I originally created this um, essay, so to speak, for a coworker and friend who wanted to get into horror, but was pretty apprehensive and scared of everything. So she asked me if I would do a training for our team at work around horror and how to get into horror if you're scared of everything. Um, And so I created this about a year ago for her and for my team at my day job. And I thought I would share my knowledge with you. So let's get right into it. How to get into horror when everything scares you. So many people think that they wouldn't like the horror genre. Um, They think that it's too that the horror genre is just too much, that it's just, that it's all gore and just stuff that none of us should really want to watch. Stuff that's a little too much for the average person to really find joy out of. I would argue that everyone has watched a horror movie and enjoyed it. Everyone, even those that say they refuse to watch horror and those that say that they have never watched a horror movie. And I'm not talking about children's movies or cartoons like Nightmare Before Christmas, Halloween Town, um, the Ichabod Crane cartoon that we watched from Disney back in the day. Um, We watched it every year in elementary school around Halloween time. Those are not the horror that I'm referencing that everybody has at least seen. I'm referencing genuine horror. While the horror genre has often been synonymous with blood, gore, and jump scares, it's actually a bit more broad and nuanced than that. Generally, the horror genre encapsulates any form of storytelling that is intended to scare, shock, or stir up dread and terror in an audience. So using that broad term, lots and lots of movies could be considered in the horror genre. Um, One I often argue with people about is Silence of the Lambs. Um, especially since it's an Academy Award winning film and was marketed more as a quote unquote thriller. Um, I firmly believe and I will die on this hill that the silence of the lambs is a horror movie. What is more horrific than a serial killer? Someone that has no morals and will just pick up random strangers to harm them. I can't think of anything scarier than that in the in real world scenarios. So I will, I will argue forever until the ends of time that The Silence of the Lambs is a horror film. So I found this really cool chart um, that last year. It was originally found on popcorn horror created by Horror on Screen, but I've been un- unable to find the original posting. I have found this chart shared on various other websites. So I will link the Reddit post where I'm using the current chart that I'm going to be speaking about um, so that you can take a look at this chart but it kind of lays out the horror genres and subgenres in all kinds of different categories so when most people think horror they think of the most extreme column the gore and disturbing column now this column is holding movies such as um, Tokyo Gore Police and Itchy the Killer in a Splatter movie that those are both pretty extreme Um, a Serbian film Um, Cannibal movies like The Green Inferno and Cannibal Holocaust. Torture movies like Saw, um, 
of course, hostile. Those tend to be in the gore and disturbing category. And that's what most individuals think of when they think of the horror genre. But like we're discussing today, and you'll you'll soon to come to learn, the horror genre is way, way more um, detailed than that. It encompasses many, many kinds of subgenres. If you're wanting to get into the horror genre, um, I recommend that you kind of take a good uh, look at this chart and decide what what really what really speaks to you. Um, we have a category for psychological horror. So those can be broken down into phobia and isolation type horror like The Shining. Fanaticism horror like Martyrs and Frailty. Uh, Martyrs is, is also kind of one that's more gore and disturbing. My personal experience when, with watching Martyrs recently for the first time. Um, I found it to be a really good movie. It had a really good story. I will never watch this movie again. It it was a little it was a little much for me, and it stayed with me for about a week after watching it. Amazing special effects. I really like this movie, but it also disturbed me so much that I don't know that I'll watch it again. Um, so that's not one I would recommend anyone starts with. Um, under psychological as well, we also have like madness and paranoia. So Goodnight Mommy and The Babadook are good examples of this. Um, home invasion movies can fit in here with like Inside and The Strangers. Those can all be considered in the psychological category. Uh, we also have killer, killer movies for the horror genres. So like your slashers, like Scream, Friday the 13th, Crime and Jallo, like Deep Red, uh, Backwoods and Redneck ones, like Wrong Turn and Wolf Creek. And some of these also kind of bleed into others, like I kind of mentioned before with Martyrs. So don't feel like these are all descriptive of these, these categories are not descriptive of this, these movies exclusively. Um, we also have monster films, which is one of my personal favorites. Um, I have a deep love for terrible, terrible horror film. And a lot of monster movies fit into this category. So within monsters, you have zombies. Um, you have the undead zombies, like Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Dead Snow. And then you have what's called like virus zombies from like 28 Days Later, um, where they're not technically undead. Um, they're just humans who have been infected with a virus, but they can all fit under the zombie category. Um, you also have traditional monsters like vampires, werewolves, mummies, all of your classic universal monsters. Um, classic and mythological monsters can fit in this category. I, um, Medusa could fit into this category as a mythological monster. Um, anything back from the old days in folklore and classic literature. Um, giant monsters, which are a great time. Uh, the Mist, Cloverfield, Godzilla is a horror movie, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> aliens also fit into this. So you have so signs and the thing that fit into the monster category. And then the, one of the other big overarching subgenres would be the paranormal subgenre. Also one of my favorites, um, paranormals movies actually scare me the most um, for some reason these ones usually really get under my skin and I just love them so you have ghosts and spirits like Lake Mungo and the Tale of Two Sisters haunted house movies house on haunted hill um, the changeling which is one of the all-time greats in my opinion um, possession movies like the exorcist um, taking of Deborah Logan Devil and Demon slash Hell movies. So Drag Me to Hell could be considered in that category. It's not a possession movie because she doesn't actually get possessed, but she does end up experiencing hell. Um, which is in the occult or, of course, in the paranormal category. So The Witch, The Conjuring, those sort of things. And then, and then like supernatural movies like Oculus and It Follows can fit into the paranormal subgenre. And within these... Um, overarching subgenres, the the main uh, five, I guess. You have like sub subgenres like comedy horror, sci fi horror. There's horror romance like Shaun of the Dead, um, gothic horrors, body horrors, technology, meta, found footage, also a favorite of mine. Um, all kinds of sub sub genres. So you can really go really deep with horror. It's not just limited to the traditional gore and disturbing aspect of the horror genre. In fact, some of the scariest horror movies have absolutely no gore in them. So once you have like a subgenre picked out, something that kind of interests you, let's say monster movies, for example, you can start re refining your options on where you want to start. Um, so where do you want to start with something cheesy or funny? Do you want to watch something that you can laugh at like Killer Sofa? 
highly recommend Killer Sofa. Um, do you want a lot of special effects? Do you want some more atmospheric horror like the Changeling? The possibilities are really endless when trying to get into the horror genre. The obvious answer to start with horror movies would be children's movies like Hocus Pocus, Halloween Town, like I mentioned before. But I'm not going to focus on these suggestions for someone to get into the horror genre that may not be a little afraid of it. Um, th- those are a little too easy. <laughs> I feel like we should try to step out of our comfort zone a little bit and try to experience something a little a little different and something that's not marketed and created for children. So once you start with that subgenre I mentioned in the previous um, discussion, you can see if there's a comedy or a parody of that, like Scary Movie. Scary Movie is a great place to start if you're kind of wanting to get into the horror genre. Um, I would say Ki- Cabin in the Woods also is pretty pretty funny, but some people may not want to dive into that one because it can get pretty bloody at the end. When you uh, pick a comedy or a, a parody, it's it could really help you get into the genre. Laughing at the ridiculousness of it all may help you enjoy the film more and really open up the world of horror to you. A quote that I really like kind of explaining horror and comedy in the relationship comes from Robert Block, the author of Psycho. And he says that comedy and horror are the opposite sides of the same coin. And I really believe this is true. How much of comedy is really built on the foundation of tragedies or a horrific event? Listen, think about what stand-up comedians use in their material. Generally, it's really horrific things that really get us to laugh when we make fun of it. So it only makes sense that horror and comedy are are very linked. Um, I read an article on Discover Magazine about the biology of humor, and it opens with an example of a man at a cemetery, and as he was watching his mother be lowered into the earth, he started laughing. Laughter tends to re- de- release te- laughter tends to release tension. Um, there's been studies by many doctors, but one I'm going to specifically re- reference is the study by Julia Wilkins. Um, it's entitled "Humor Theories and the Psych- Physiological Benefits of Laughter." Um, she has come up with a theory that is called relief theory that laughter tends to break the tension for us and it helps us cope with whatever's going on. So not only we were using that when we listen to comedy, but also in horror. How many times are we watching a horror movie seeing something really ridiculous that's really scary and we just nervously start laughing? We laugh in situations where it may be inappropriate, just in order to cope. So it only makes logical sense that horror and comedy are linked, that they are opposite sides of the same coin. A direct quote from Dr. Wilkins' study explains this. Um, It says, it is believed that by finding humor in stressful or potentially threatening situations, people can replace negative with positive affect, thereby giving them an increased ability to cope with negative states of affairs. So horror and comedy both help us cope. And it kind of explains why horror helps so many of us cope with what's going on in our lives. I did kind of get off on a tangent there about horror and comedy and their relationships. We'll, we'll do a deep dive on that in a future episode. But getting back on track with how to get into horror when it's something that you're not really interested in or maybe it, it frightens you a little bit. You, you just don't know where to start. Um, I have a few suggestions. I highly recommend you ask friends, co-workers, family members for recommendations. Ask the community, what kind of movie should I watch? Just make sure that you state any hard lines you have. If there's anything in a movie that you just don't want to see. I believe all of us have something that we just prefer not to experience in a movie. Whether it's sexual assault or an animal being harmed. We all have those lines. Um, this will help you weed out any any elements in a film that may disturb you or may be a little too much for you. I also highly recommend you utilize the website doesthedogdie.com to check out for any elements in the film you do not want to see. Um, they don't only reference animal um, animal cruelty in films, but they do have filters you can apply to see if something that you just aren't interested in seeing exists in a film, be it horror, comedy, or otherwise. And make sure you watch horror movies with a group of friends. Um, We did kind of explore this in the first episode about watching horror movies in a group and what it does. Um, It does bring people together. 
psychologists have wondered often why people who love horror movies like an addiction bond over weird things in a horror movie with um, those around them. Scientists think that if people could bond over a horrible thing like a horror movie, there must be a psychological reason for it. So there's been studies about it. Um, The adrenaline rush actually helps intensify your feelings towards your friends and family who watch the movie with you. And no matter how you feel about the movie, even if you don't like it, you feel like you had a great time just because of the adrenaline rush combined with being with people you love. So horror can bring you together and it is a more enjoyable experience, even if it isn't something that you are particularly interested in. Um, I highly, highly recommend you watch Horror Mystery Science Theater 3000 (laughs) style, where you and your friends just talk and make fun of what's going on screen, crack jokes, um, comment. There's nothing more fun than watching a terrible movie, especially with a group of friends and commenting on the insanity that's going on. I personally do a bad movie night once a month with a group of friends where we watch just B-rated movies or some of the worst movies you've ever seen just so that we can um, make jokes and have a great time together. And it's it's been a really great experience for me. As for relationships go, uh, horror movies provide a perfect environment for closeness. This can release oxytocin along with other mood-boosting hormones, which will provide a greater sense of strength and togetherness between a person and their loved one. Also, because horror movies reduce stress and anxiety, couples who watch horror movies together tend to have stronger, happier relationships because they have an outlet for releasing that stress together. And I've seen this firsthand. Um, The individual that I created this essay for has since started watching more horror with their partner, and it has brought them closer together. And she's had many a conversation with me about how it has impacted their relationship. So watch horror. I also have some recommendations for anyone who is interested in getting into the horror genre that aren't those kid movies, with the exception of one. Um, some some good places to start of movies that I feel are really good at representing horror, but also aren't too extreme for most audiences. Although there are a couple here on this list I'm going to go over that do have quite a bit of gore, um, but there's also quite a bit of comedy. So they're they're a good time, in my opinion. Um, The one children's movie that I have on this list, I guess kind of a children's movie, is Gremlins. A lot of us have seen Gremlins and it's been a staple of our lives. And maybe some people don't realize that Gremlins is a horror movie. Um, But what is more horrific than little creatures coming to destroy you and potentially take over and ruin everything around you? Um, This movie was originally written as a more dark horror movie before it was turned light into a more children's movie. Um, It is also just a really great time and a good place to start. Um, Two movies that are really funny but do rely heavily on gore are Shaun of the Dead and Return of the Living Dead. Both of these movies are hilarious and just a good time for all. I remember when I was 10 years old on my 10th birthday party, we watched Return of the Living Dead. Um, Everybody had a really great time reacting to the film, laughing, eating cake. But unfortunately, after that, I didn't see a lot of those friends again. Pretty sure they went home and told their moms what they watched at my house and were not allowed to play with me anymore. (laughs) I mean, it's a really good memory for me. Um, It's it's kind of funny now. Two more movies that are kind of on the B-movie ridiculous side are Velocipaster and Rubber. Velocipaster is about a priest who gets scratched by a raptor claw that has some sort of supernatural abilities so he turns into a raptor and fights ninjas i mean what's more fun than a a raptor priest fighting ninjas i haven't found anything more fun than that rubber is also really great it's about a literal tire with that rolls down the street with psychic abilities it's It's a weird one, but it's really fun to watch with a group of people. Um, Most people react pretty strongly to this this little weird movie, but it's it's a good time. Some more serious horror movies that I recommend would be, of course, the classic Psycho. I think most horror fans would recommend Psycho as a good starting point. I know it's mostly considered a thriller, but again, I believe that serial killer movies are more of a horror movie than a thriller. I feel that this movie can be considered a horror film. Um, 1408, based on a story by Stephen King, is a great movie that delves into loss and divorce and coping with that. Um, It can be a little more scary, I guess. Some people consider it to be more scary, but 
I think it's a good starting point for horror. The Changeling, classic, classic movie. I'm not talking about the Angelina Jolie Changeling movie that came out a few years ago. I'm talking about the movie from about, I think in 1980 with George C. Scott in it. It's a ghost story. Almost nothing happens on screen, but it has really good tension and just a really great storyline. So I highly, highly recommend it. The Others is another great supernatural ghost story that wouldn't be too scarring for anyone trying to get into the genre. Um, I won't give away anything of this movie if you haven't seen it because it kind of ruins it if you know the premise too much. But it's about uh, a woman and her children and it's it's a ghost story as well. And of course, Silence of the Lambs that I talked about in the beginning of this episode. The performances in that movie are just extraordinary. Um, clearly, they, they won uh, many Oscars for their performances. It's It's a really good movie to take a look at the horror genre. And that's all I have for this episode. Um, Thank you for tuning in to Horror Study Hall. Remember to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Horror Study Hall. Um, Like and subscribe and um, give us a good rating that helps the podcast get more widespread to a wider audience and stay spooky.